So Kiwi, you, you got something special for us today? <sighs> special would be one way of describing it, yeah. Yeah. Special needs. This is a beautiful truck. Yeah. 60 F100. 60 F100. Nice. Uh, my, my first, I had the same first impression as you. Yeah. Really nice looking truck. Uh, that's a little weird. What's going on with that? Uh, the customer decided she didn't want the decal on there anymore. Oh. So she's just started peeling it off. So what's the story with this truck exactly? Before we... It came in. It came in on a tow truck. Wouldn't run. Okay. Okay. Um, so we had a look around. The battery was dead and all. So we put a new battery in. It's cranking over. Wouldn't. Didn't want to fire. It's like, okay, pour a bit of gas down it see if it'll run. Did that. It ran. Fired away. As soon as you stop feeding it gas, just stop dead. Okay. Like, okay, maybe it's out of gas. The gas was looking pretty low on the gauge. Um, like, put five gallons in it, same issue. Didn't want to start. And uh, so we kind of, like, hmm, that's weird. So we put it up on the rack and we're looking for an issue. Maybe the pump's sucking air or something like that instead of fuel. Well, it comes to pass that it's sucking water. There was so much water in the fuel tank that it had actually filled up the carburetor with water. Um, I mean, we've all kind of taken the lid off a carburetor and there's been sure. like half a teaspoon of water, a few drops in the bottom. <laughs> this was just water. It was water. There was no room for fuel. Okay. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, efficiently. I mean, they're working on those water-driven water, water driven engines, but <laughs> they haven't perfected it clearly, not yet anyway. Uh, I mean, it is, it's a beautiful, did, did the customer do this restoration? The customer had it done. Um, the restoration was done at a place called Possum Hollow Garage. I've heard of Possum Hollow Garage. Yeah. They're down here in Columbia? Yeah, down that way somewhere, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, somewhere down the Columbia way. And they specialize in like these old... They do a lot of trucks, yeah. So, um... So she bought this thing from Parson Hollow Garage. She already owned the trucks. She had it restored by She them. had it restored by Yeah, them. frame off restoration. Frame off restoration? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. The details on it are just... And when you look inside, it's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, we got a few little bits undone. No. But we're the... Alarm bells started going off. Alarm bells? <laughs> well, look at the, the look in here. Oh, the rust? That's rusty water. It's like, where did that come that from? That is rusty water. Kiwi, where did that come from? Well, if you look at the door, you may not pick it up on camera, but there's a little little rusty water trail down here and over here. Oh, yeah, I see this that. This door's been completely full up with water. Oh, yeah, the whole bottom of it is The rust. whole bottom of it's brown. And there's so much filler in the bottom of it that it's blocked all the drain holes. <laughs> they mudded over the drain holes. They mudded over the drain holes. Alright. It was like, mm. But that happens. Give the idea. I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes you're, you know, that can happen and you redrill the drain holes and make sure right. the door drains out. Alright, I guess they just forgot to redrill the drain holes. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it's a frame more frustration, so they had to do a lot of stuff to this. Yeah, they, they had a lot to do. The thing I mean, everybody's human. They, you, you miss things, you know, like it's not. It's, yeah. yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't shut real good. There we go. Yes, okay. it slams shut, doesn't yeah. shut. Right. Um, it's pretty in the engine bay. Oh, very nice. We put a new battery in it. I thought it was odd that they had a five-year-old battery in, in a frame-off restoration. Well, they were busy doing the frame-off restoration and, and didn't get a chance to get a battery for it. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. Now, the, the reason we got a fuel can sat down here, it didn't come in like that. I just put that there to get it mobile and drive it around okay. the yard uh, because we got the fuel tank out of it. Um, so how did the carburetor end up full of water? The tank was full of water. Not full, but it had probably a gallon or so of water in the bottom of it. And how did the tank get full of water? Uh, yeah, I can probably show you that better inside. If we throw it up on the rack, and, and I'll show you the tank. We've got the tank out of it now, and that, okay. that's when things started to become apparent. Oh, there's more to this. There's a little more to the story, yeah. There's more to this? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Okay, let's get it inside and yeah. uh, get it up in the air. The tank was... Yeah, and I relocated the relocated the tank to under the bed. Right. And this was really the key issue. This is they hadn't sealed it here, and where this went into the tank. Right. They had a. I can we can show. I can show you on the old tank inside. There's a bigger pipe that went into the tank, 
and this just dropped in there and basically was just so wherever it rained wh wherever water came underneath it went straight down the side of the fill and then <laughs> into straight the into the tank she wasn't tipped off by the tank every time she rained it <laughs> the gauge was reading full and she probably didn't notice that no uh, that yeah. that looks a little weird up there well, the, the flooring doesn't seem to fit quite. Yeah, that's that's an ish, issue that it has that is going to become apparent up on the rack. But yeah, the, the boards aren't held down. The text, this should have carriage bolts in it, which has got the little yeah, half yeah. round heads on them with a square back on they it. They use self tappers. They use self tappers, and they've hit in places and they've missed in others. But it looks good. It does look good. And if I, bet I, was, it, I bet it rattled. Well, yeah, but, you know. If I was like a middle-aged woman who didn't really, wasn't very automotive savvy, I would look at this and say, my God, this is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the reactions you had when you picked it up. Yeah. Let's bring it inside. You say there's, the best is underneath. Yeah, the best is yet to come. <laughs> okay. All right. By the way, you guys, you need, you need to subscribe to King Kiwi's Colossal <laughs> Kingdom of Kindness is... Uh, Kiwi Classics and Customs. You know this, you're just... Yeah. <laughs> Kiwi, what happened to the... What happened to the driver's side door here? The glass. Hey Barry, what's happening, man? Hey guys. Uh, yes, that was... Truck came in, wasn't running, window was broken. Window, window was never, broken? Window was broken, well cracked. Okay. Um, never went up and down properly. Uh, there was a couple of reasons for that. They they used screws that were too long, um, and went through into the like from the door panel, went all the way through, and were fouling the, the mechanism okay. as it tried to go up and down, uh, which made a really unpleasant noise. Uh, but the biggest problem really was this, which that's the channel that goes in the door. This holds a felt. Through right. here, and it's meant to be a U-shaped channel that you push the felt into, yeah, yeah, and the window goes up and down. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know. Someone, someone has cut one side of it off completely. So we're just making up another one to go in here and make it yeah, a channel again because you can't buy this. I mean, if you've got an old '60 Ford sitting around, then I okay, use one of them. But you know, so we're having to repair this one. But the channel was out and just flopping around. The glass kind of got tripped over it got jammed up in the in the channel and you know cranking on it and it just cracked the window well when you're doing a complete framework restoration sometimes things like that make it overlooked <laughs> yeah yeah let's go with that so you said the best of this is is underneath is this the gas tank that was on that's it? the gas tank that was in it um, nice new tank wait wait a minute before you even do that What's, you, it's like you're farming dual quad FE motors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we got, I mean, it's, not everyone can say that they've got two 24 barrel, you know, 427 FEs. That's an all aluminum side oiler, too. Is it really? That's aluminum block heads, that's everything. That's a tricky engine. Is that one of those dove blocks? I don't know who made the, who made the engine, but it's got a Ford stamping on it, or the Ford numbers, but not the Ford logo. Oh, really? Which, so apparently it's a copy. Okay. Um, someone's, you know, some oh, copies sounds a bit negative, but it, it's it's a company made them. What's this one going in? That's going in a little AC Cobra kit car. Oh. Yeah, which is that's going to be dynamite. And you're going to cover that on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to get Kathy over and take her for a ride in it. Okay. And see if we can't age it by ten years or something. <laughs> She's been through a lot. <laughs> She's been through a lot. <laughs> and this is that Mustang you've been. This doing is the Mustang that we're doing wow. the engine set back on. Dude, why do you even talk to me when you can do work like this? <laughs> Amazing. That's just beautiful. I mean, it, honestly, that's the stuff. I mean, uh, you know, I enjoy my job you now working on these old cars, but that's the stuff that I really enjoy doing. Yeah. That's, that's almost, you know, like if I've had enough of an engine that won't run properly, I'll come and do some metal work. And it's just, it's, it's therapeutic almost. See, I'm the exact opposite. I'm all about the motor and I, I, don't, have the, yeah. I don't have the eye for that. I don't have yeah. the, the talent or the, yeah. the patience. It takes a lot of patience to yeah. do that. I, just, I get a kick out of making it look factory. It looks factory. When that thing's fin paint, finished and painted, there, there's yeah. no way you could distinguish yeah. that from a factory piece. Yeah. 
It's beautiful. Even the way you ran the seam across. Yeah, we continued the seam across. Yeah. You could have just gone up in one piece, but then it's, that's, it's going to look like exactly what it is. But you're covering this on your channel also. Yes. So anybody who wants to, if you want to know more about this, it's... Kiwi Ki Classics and Customs. I, I, I'll get it. I'll You'll get, get it. it. One day. All right, let's talk about this gas tank over here, man. Uh, right. For whatever so this reason... This is how it ended up with a carburetor full of water. Of water. Yeah, absolutely chock full. Um... When the tank was mounted, where they had it mounted, that this the top of the filler neck here was flush with the underside of the timber, okay. all right. And then this little filler neck came in through the hole in the timber, like so. Okay. But got a bit of a disparity going on. Little gap. Uh, so that sat there on the timber. Any water that ran down the bed got under the edge of that and just ran. It was like they plumbed it deliberately to get water in the tank. Dude, when you're doing a full frame off restoration on a vehicle like that, sometimes you just don't have the time to seal up a... Okay. So, <laughs> that's, that's probably... The other thing, I didn't like the, the, the way it, it had been mounted, and I don't know who mounted it, but... Yeah. Um, it had to cut these actual one-by-one one tubes going across, and they had it mounted like that. So they had a bolt each corner, Okay. And hanging off the four bolts, at each, you know, one bolt at each corner. These things are heavy when they're it full was of gas. Hanging, hanging. Off the bolts. They were above it like that. So you know, like, like it's heavy. So you put a lot of stress on these mount points. Sure. And then when you hit a bump, it always doubles the yeah. weight or more. You know, um, and it's like okay. So what we've done is we've, we've changed it around. We're mounting it that way. Okay. So it so sits it's on got the ledge. Support. Right. Um, and it bolts up to the rear chassis rails, not being not welded on. So you can service it. If you even need to get it out, you undo four bolts, tank comes What's the inside of the tank look like? Um, yeah, this is family it friendly. It can't show, be pretty. It? It's really not, no. It's, um, the sh what's a real shame is it's quite a new tank. You know, presumably put in when it was restored. Oh, jeez. Um, let's see if I can aim it down in there a little better. It's probably not going to be bright enough. It's not on. It's pure rust, it's solid rust. It's just full of rust in the bottom. The sender unit's rusted up, the pickup uh, tube's rusted up. Uh, it's just a mess, you can't put that back in. There's no way to clean it out properly. But these are minor things. I'm sure the rest of the truck is nice, because they did a full frame off restoration on this thing. Frame off restoration? Yeah. yeah. Let's have a look. I mean, the results, this is, this is, what you see is what you get. So, the chassis has been sandblasted and painted. The chassis is in quite good shape. Very pretty. You look at the crossbars holding the, the bed up, they're rusty. You see that? Now, maybe it just rusted in the time period that she's had got the car back. I don't know, but there's big holes up here. There's big holes. These rails are just are gone. Um, you've got, yeah, major holes in various places on the bed rails. If you look up, let me try and show you, Kathy. Yeah, you look. You come up from this direction, and you'll see a. Oh yeah. Some angle irons been bolted in here to try and turn this back into a mount. This is all. This is all holes. It's rotted out there. It's the same on the other side. Uh, if you swing back to this one, you've got the same thing here, big holes up here, tech screws into, into fresh air. That's the actual bed mount, so if this bed bounced around a little bit, it's just going to tear that off, no? Yeah. So this, what it really needed were these rails replaced, but you well, can't see those. They're only 65 years old. <laughs> There's a big, big hole right here too. Yeah, it's not a complete, I mean, they've replaced, you know, it's all new brake hoses. They did put brake nice brakes and brake hoses on it. Um, it's going to exhaust. And but, you know, when you're doing a full frame off custom restoration for, you know, a customer on a truck like this, sometimes you miss a rotted cross member uh, occasionally, you know? I mean, I would think there's a lot of work to be done here. Clearly, that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. But the rest of it, I'm sure, is beautiful. Is that fiberglass? Uh... Yeah. 
Maybe that is. It's fiberglass. It's fiberglass matting. Um, it's, there's lots of Bondo in the cab corners. I see that. And it's, I mean, this is, you see this a lot on these old trucks. You get an old truck running and the floors are thin, paper thin, people look pot riveted sheets of metal over there to keep their feet dry and that, that goes on. Well, of course. And this is an old truck. Yes. But it has had a complete frame off. It's had a frame off restoration. There's more fiberglass over here. Yep. Yeah, here's a patch. Here's a patch. What's that, this? That's a bit of, we actually peeled that off. That's a bit of that silver foil tape, that aluminum foil tape. And that's been put on there. Oh, that's pretty convenient. <laughs> that's to, to cover the holes. Nice, very nice. Uh, you've got, there's more fiberglass here. Oh yeah, the whole fiberglass floor here. The whole floor paint is fiberglass. This side's all fiberglass. But look at the care they took when they painted it. Yes. It's beautiful. Um, this is the cab mounts, the cab corner mounts. This is. Oh jeez. Yeah. What's this? What's all this around here? Someone's put some what appears to be grey RTV around there uh, for strength, maybe. Well, I mean, RTV is a reasonable structural uh, element, but this, this is all... It's all been patched this is over. All been, yeah. Yeah. Is it, this what holds the, the actual body of the truck? Onto oh. the chassis. Yeah, it holds on. You've got four mounting points. You've got one, two, three, four. Wow. How's this one? The rear ones, the rear mounts are okay. The two front ones have been, shall we say, repaired. Well, as long as you get T-boned towards the middle instead of over here, you should survive. You should survive. Yeah. Yeah. In theory. But they did a nice... Hey, be careful when you work on this. There's a couple of... Yeah, you make it... These sheet metal screws might get you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, Kiwi, it's a... Uh, I mean, wow. <laughs> what do you say? Um, yeah. So anyway, we're putting a new tank in it, we've cleaned the carburetor out, we're going to fix the window, and it's going back to the owner. Um, I believe it's going to be for sale soon. She's going to, she's going to sell this? Yeah. I wonder what she's got into it. Like, what does a frame of restoration like this cost with beautiful body and trim work and interior work? Now, at a, I do not know any numbers, but what would at, you think? At, a complete, at a guess... Yeah, if you had to guess, what does this cost? Probably 70 grand. 70 grand? Yeah. That's American. American. That's not even like the That's foreign stuff that you use. No. <laughs> yeah, American. I would say I would say probably 60 or 70 thousand dollars is probably about a ballpark what something, uh, you know, yeah. a complete frame off restoration yeah. on it. I mean, there is a lot of work and some of it's been executed relatively well. Everywhere you looked is, is Bondo and fiberglass under this thing and, and just random sheet metal screws. There's, there's also... Yeah, so wait, there's more. <laughs> when you uh, swing that around, get a better view. When you look up into here, there's loads of pinholes here. That's all just paper thin. Now, the fenders have been off this. It's probably been sandblasted, I'd say, to guess. The whole truck. And well, it makes that's been it, apparent. It makes a spectacular appearance. You know, yeah. like when you walk up to it, because when I walked up to this thing, I was like, wow, that's a nice truck. Mm. You know, I'm not, I'm not really into the old truck thing, but this is something, you know, if I had this parked in my mm. garage, I'd be like, sweet. Mm. But yeah, when you get up close, it's, uh, it's a little bit different. One of the things that upsets me with these, this type of thing is, this is a woman who spent a lot of money, um, you know, this was her dream, um, she wanted an old truck, you know, a lot of people do, and she paid good money for it. And now she's going to be selling it because. But it's you know, not you just you just said something that that's important that I think a lot of people overlook, right? This was a dream of hers. Like yeah. she didn't just wake up in the morning and say, "I'm going to have a complete frame of restoration done on a 1964 truck." This was something she dreamed of. This is something she planned and schemed for, and, and everything else. Mm. So beyond the money, it's like it's got to be a bit deflating, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like there are other aspects to this mm. beyond just. Hmm. You know, what's obvious. The, the, the moving forward as the hobby or the sport goes forward, we're going to lose this lady to the hobby. She's we're going to lose her. Going to sell the truck. Friends. She's going to take a loss, um, and she's not going to play that game again. Right. Yeah. It's a shame. Why would you? 
Like, why would you take that risk again? I mean, it's not seven hundred dollars we're talking about. There's a couple more zeros involved. Yeah. But you know, the thing is, it's not just this truck. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of these things out there. Yeah. Just like this. Yeah. And there's countless people like this woman who like, hey, I like old cars or I like old trucks, and I I, I have the money and I want to have something like this, mm. and this is what they end up with. Mm. It's a crime. This, it's. I mean, honestly, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is this is just. Pure I would. I mean, criminal. long term, I'd love to see the body shops, you know, or the restoration shops get together and have some kind of an association where you need need a membership and people police it. Exactly. You, people just turn up and say, "What are you doing?" Exactly. And they'll say, "Why did you do that?" You know, the anarchist capitalist in me says. You know, no, that's wrong. But when you look at stuff like this, you start to realize why there has to be some sort of just, just like, just like safety regulations. I always griped about, you know, the the safety, you know, the, the the book and SFI regulations and all this other stuff. But in the end, you know, all of those rules, you know, they're written in somebody's blood, and yeah, it's they serve a purpose. And you're right when it comes to like restoration work or, or dealing in classic cars because this right here is typically you go to you go to a classic car lot on the showroom floor and they're beautiful they're painted bright colors the interior is mm. nice it's and it's all to bring in that clientele middle age a little bit older mm. they've got their you know they're they're retired and they just want something sweet you know they always dreamed about mm. and this is what they end up with mm. and it ends up here where somebody like you have to straighten yeah. out well she was looking at a, at a you know, if, if, to get it up to par, spending quite a bit more money. Approximately. So to take this truck from where it is now, right, mm -hmm. and run through it front to back and make it not only proper but safe, because in my opinion, that's not safe. When you've got when you've got the the cross members that hold the bed in mm -hmm. place with rot holes in them, and you've got fiberglass and and silicone holding the front body mounts together, mm -hmm. the cab mounts. Yeah. So in New Zealand, they have the safety inspections that you have to do every six months. And this would fail. So you would have no option but to take it off the road and, and fix, fix it. it properly. So in your opinion, right, ballpark, to make this thing safe and reliable from where it is right now, mm. what do you think a fair investment or a fair price would be? You're almost starting over. Because the bed's got to come off the chassis. The body's got to come off the chassis to right. fix the floors and fix the mounts, which means all the front sheet metal's got to come off. You've got to try and execute all that without damaging the paint. And you can't. It's impossible to do that because they paint it over Bondo and yeah. tape and fiberglass yeah. Yeah. and um, everything else. So there's just a, a, a load of And you're going to spend 30 grand like, to take it to a shop. If you want to do, do it yourself, I mean, the rules that are in place that we deal with, we live in here in Tennessee, this is quite drivable. Yes. There's no reason you can't buy this truck. Everyone's going to ooh and ah and go, it's lovely. And you can drive it around. You can take it to cars and coffee. And 95% of the people aren't going to be in either wise. They're not savvy. Um, so you can drive it exactly like it is. You don't have to throw another 30 grand at it. But it is dangerous. Would you put your family in this no. thing and send it down the road? No. In traffic? With, with people zigzagging around and playing Speed Racer and Death Race 2000 out there on the highway? No, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not saying this thing's about to fall apart. It's not. It's not going to fall apart, but it's not safe. It's no. not intact. But that is part of the, unfortunately, a little bit of the culture in, in this hobby sport here in the States is that there's really nobody, there's nobody doing checks and balances. There's I nobody. I seem to remember something on the, the place who did this on their website where they, they talk about redneck engineering. Right. Maybe that's what we're talking about here. Maybe that's what we're talking about. It's a shame. Um, and it's always red. If there's rednecks watching there, redneck, I, I like I love red. I, I'm an Italian New York redneck. And they get a bad rap, in my opinion. It's a bit harsh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, um, well. yeah, it's just, it's, and it's a horrible phone call to make. I had to phone, phone the lady and say, hey, you know, we figured out why it's not running. What was her reaction when you when you gave her? She the... was upset. She was upset. I mean, not crying upset, but she was angry slash upset and like, uh, yeah, and it's just not a fun call to make. But I can't, you know, I, I, I talk with my wife about it, and she's like, "What do I do? Do I just not say anything?" 
No. Do mm. I just fix the fuel tank and fix the window and just say, go and have fun and know this stuff's going on? Mm. No, you do the you right know. thing. You do the right thing. All right, man. Well, but, yeah, you, you've got to be careful. Like when you're handing over a lot of money to somebody to work on your baby, you've got to make sure they're the right person. It's starting to rust underneath the bolt. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. But the trim is beautiful, the paint is beautiful. You got a, you've got a very presentable, very showable truck. Uh, and she's, you know, she is going to sell it, and she's not making any secrets about. Um, well, she can't now. The condition. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I discussed this with her. I said, you know, can we do a little expose on this? Yeah. Um, because kind of people need to know, and she was all about it. She's like, yeah, that's right, because she's not planning on, you know, trying to pull the wall over someone's eyes and say, look at my beautiful truck. I want fifty grand for it, or whatever she, you know, might be asking. It's going to be for sale. And it's going to be as is, where is, and whoever buy comes beware. to buy it, they they can you know we'll either tell them about the video, watch it, or you know we'll put it up on the rack for her, and they can have a look themselves. And as I said, it's quite drivable. There's a lot of guys out there would happily drive this. Yep. Well, would I put my kids in it? No. I'm a little because of my background in New Zealand, where they're so safety conscious, like to a fault, they're the other way. You know I, that. That has a trickle down effect in me, and I, I get very See, I'm, safety conscious about that kind of stuff. I'm like the least safety, I, I mean, to a fault. I'm, I'm the least safety conscious person there is. Mm. When it comes to my own stuff, but when I think about if I'm doing something and somebody else is going in there, mm. I cut my corners. I, 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 I look at every possible scenario of what could go wrong because mm. I've seen enough stuff go wrong and I've mm. seen the damage. Mm. So when it comes to doing work for, for somebody else, no, I, safety is number one, mm. and it, to me, rotted and, and patched together structural components. Mm. You know, would it have taken that much longer to fabricate a new mount out of steel as opposed to patch that one up? You can buy them. You can buy them. Reproduce. So this you was can buy a complete one-piece floor pan um, with or without the mounts, and you put the mounts in, and yeah, you're talking another couple of grand, probably. Um, but that's what I do when I sleep well at night. Right. So. You know. All right. Well, we can go on about this forever. Yeah. I think I think the people got the got the general idea. Got the gist. Got the gist. Buyer beware. Right. Just because something is expensive, so just because something looks good, oh, you don't know what you're getting underneath. You know. And if you you know anybody, friends, acquaintances, whatever, who are you know of that 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 let's say demographic where they're in their their 50s or 60s or 70s and they're finally going to you know the kids are grown they're they're retired they've got their pension they're mm. and now they're finally going to buy the dream thing car truck or whatever they have at. if you know somebody in those in that position give them some guidance you know it's it's important keep the community together it helps grow it it keeps things like this from happening and this is wild that's it guys i'll see you tomorrow see you guys